it can be really overwhelming, working with lots of plans inside of the new planner. And what if your project plans are part of a bigger program of work? Maybe a transformation program or a set of projects within your relevant team or function. It can be really tricky inside a planner to go in each of those plans to get an update and status you can then share with the wider team. Could we not use portfolio management or similar capabilities in the new planner? Well today, Microsoft is now rolling out that new capability. A new way to build a portfolio for one of your programs of work, bring in your plans to Microsoft Planner and share it with your colleagues to get a view across the projects and understand what's at risk and what's on track. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use that new capability, setting up a portfolio, adding plans and tasks and more, and important considerations about how portfolio management works in the new planner experience to make sure it will work for you. And before we dive in, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button to find great new tutorials every week, just like this one, showing you how to use the tools you have in so many better ways. So let's head into the new planner and get started with portfolio management. So let's get started and create a portfolio to manage all of our plans. Inside of the Teams app for Planner, we now have a new option on the left hand side for My Portfolios. Selecting that button here will give us a view of any portfolios that we have access to. To create a new one, all we need to do is go to New Portfolio in the top right and give your portfolio a name to get started. In addition, you'll also find a drop down to add a group. Here are all of the Microsoft 365 groups and teams that you have access to. That means your portfolio can be shared with members of that group or team. If you don't opt to select a group or team here, your portfolio is only shared with yourself. Yes, it's not visible to other people. So let's go ahead and give my portfolio name and also attach it to our program management team that I've also set up as a Microsoft team. With that now done, all we now need to do is select the Create button and Planner will begin to create our portfolio. In seconds, we have a new portfolio created that anyone else in the Microsoft team for our program management would also see through their My Portfolios button and be able to open and engage with. So as we can see, going back into our portfolio, we have no plans and that's something we need to change. Let's add a plan in to also ensure we begin to populate our portfolio. By selecting the Add Plan button, we see a list of all the plans you have access to in the right hand side. To filter the list, just go ahead and search for a keyword to find the relevant plan and simply left click into it. Now I've selected my plan, you'll also see it requires some type of permissions to the portfolio and roadmap. What this means is, is it creates a power automate flow to keep this plan in sync in your portfolio and therefore it uses your account to keep that sync up to date. You'd even find that Power Automate flow in your own personal or my flows inside of Power Automate. So let's go ahead and select Connect. And we'll now see that the plan is added into our portfolio. At this point, we get basic metadata, the plan name, the owner, the progress of the plan, start and end dates, all synchronized from the plan itself. We also see a status drop down, allowing you to update the status to the relevant one. Here I'll select on track, that is not synchronized from the plan itself. So a member of the program management team who have access to this portfolio can keep this up to date. It may also be a reason why you want the project owner or manager to also see this in the portfolio to ensure they can select the relevant status as the project moves forward. But in addition, do we now see tasks inside of the plan? While selecting roadmap, we don't see anything at all. By zooming out, we'll see there are no tasks or phases on this plan, and surely that can't be correct. There are definitely phases and tasks that we should see for this plan itself. And that's because now we have to connect these tasks into the plan to see them. By left clicking onto the plan name, you'll see an option here that says row item zero connected row items. A row item is effectively a task or a subtask in your plan. Selecting Update Items, you'll see all tasks and also subtasks in your plan that you can now bring forward into the project itself. You can also collapse drop downs to get a high level view of all of the tasks. And I would say, at least my recommendation, is to bring in the phases of the project. But why would I do that? Well, adding your subtasks can make your roadmap busy 
and also surely your subtasks should be managed in the plan itself rather than seeing them through your portfolio. So I'll be adding a few of our phases, I'll select update and also that'll take a minute or two to come through depending on how many you sync. But as we're only synchronized three, we can see on here that I now see these phases appearing inside of my roadmap. By left clicking into them, I see the start and the end dates and also the status, which again needs to be updated manually that is not automatically updated from the project plan itself. Yes, that could be frustrating and another reason why the project owner or manager is likely to have access to the portfolio to ensure this is kept up to date. At this point, I'll mark this work as initiating as being done, but also the planning work is currently on track. We can also see another option here for develop the project schedule, which is currently at risk as that's not been done as yet. So you can now see that these color coded indicators can help you get a view of the project as it moves forward in the plan without necessarily opening the plan and finding more detail. But you can absolutely add tasks in the same way and track status just by bringing them into your plan. In addition though, we know that your portfolio has more than one plan. So go back to plans and simply run the same process. Add a plan, find it on the right and connect it into your portfolio once again to connect another plan. Portfolio management in Microsoft Planner is just one part of the puzzle when it comes to task management in Microsoft 365. Maybe you're new to Planner Premium or unsure what other task management capabilities exist in Microsoft 365? Well, here at Your 365 Coach, we've created our new masterclass focusing on task management in Microsoft 365. We show you how to use Planner Premium in the best possible ways, but also other apps like Microsoft Loop, Microsoft Lists and more to also be able to improve the way that you manage tasks in different apps and also help you work in so much better ways. If you'd like to find out more, then follow the link in the video description below and get enrolled on our masterclass and join me to learn brand new skills in Microsoft 365 that will transform the way that you work. Now let's head back into portfolio management and see what else it can do for you. And I've now connected two more plans into our portfolio. And once again, I'm able to track the status of these. This one is on track. And at the moment, this project is also at risk. A color coded indicator helps me track the relevant plans in our portfolio. Once again on our roadmap, we see the plans appearing, but we now know what to do to bring these tasks or phases in. Once again, left click onto the plan name, under your update items, select the items you'd like to now have inside of your timeline or roadmap view. I'll go ahead and add a few into here and also update their status to see them visibly inside of our portfolio. And now we've connected our phases and tasks and updated the status, we can see a big benefit of how we work in portfolios. Now me and the senior program management team can understand where our projects are at and all the high risk activities to take action and speak with the project owner, who's also listed on the left hand side next to the relevant project. But in addition, we've got some key dates we need to track. So we can add those in within our own team as a senior program management in our portfolio. By selecting add key date, we can now go ahead and select a key date and also put a due date and also track the status of it. Handy if you've got relevant dates like the end of year or budget sign off areas to make sure you're tracking against all of your different plans. With our key date now added, we can see here it appears inside of our portfolio. FY25 budget review, once again, able to track the status. And you can add different key dates so you can also track them in your relevant portfolio. Once again, stage gates of information that you and your team would find helpful when you're reviewing it as a portfolio of work. But what if this is not detailed enough and you want to access the plan directly? All you now need to do is left click on the plan itself. You'll see an option to view in plan. By left clicking, this oddly doesn't take you into Microsoft Teams or Planner app. It takes you out into projects on the web, which effectively is delivering that planner premium capability. And you can now access all of these tasks and make relevant updates. It's important to remember that the people inside of the portfolio don't need access to the plan itself, but if they do, they can of course access it in this way and keep the plan up to date. And as your plan changes, your portfolio will also be kept up to date. But it's worth noting, that's not immediate synchronization. Often it will update once a day at minimum, but if you need to update it and pull through relevant information quickly, 
you can go into any of your plans and select open details and select the refresh button. That now will pull any new information that you're syncing into your portfolio in real time. So it is important to note that yes, your portfolio stay in sync, but not instantly. And therefore, if you need to pull in relevant information quickly, well, you can go ahead and refresh this. If not, it'll update itself at least a minimum of once a day. And finally, in the right hand side, you'll see a share button. And by selecting this, you can see here who has access to the portfolio. And because we've connected this to our Microsoft team called Program Management Team, we see any members of that Microsoft team also have access to this portfolio. But as you can see, the ability to now bring your plans into one single place in the Planner app as a portfolio is now possible to do and also share with your wider team to keep an eye on all of your important projects moving forward and ensuring they're kept on track. Whilst this new capability in Planner is really helpful, there are also some considerations that you need to be aware of to make sure you don't find any hidden surprises along the way. The first off, who can create new portfolios and add plans into them? Well, there's a licensing requirement. That means you need to have a project P3 or P5 license. And yes, that costs more than the Planner Premium license. But if you only have a Planner Premium license, you can view portfolios that you're added into, but you won't have the ability to make changes into them or add in plans. You'll get read-only access. That means it's really going to be the right people in your company that need the higher level of licensing to manage these portfolios. In addition, the new capability today only supports Planner Premium plans. Yes, you can add in a Planner Basic plan into one of your portfolios. It is only available for Planner Premium plans. And as we've seen in this tutorial, there's no simple way to get a My Task view across all of those plans. I would have loved to have seen that personally, having a grid or a board view of those tasks across all of those plans, that you could look at at a glance. And also, the portfolio management capability is only synchronizing a subset of metadata. As we've seen, there's very little information available through the portfolio. You need to open the plan to go and see the additional information and make any changes to it. Your portfolio is more of a synchronized copy provided it on a roadmap or timeline view so you can keep on top of from a perspective of roadmap planning or program management. And also, as you've seen today, the security of portfolio management is built around Microsoft 365 groups and teams. Yes, you can have a portfolio only visible to you. That is supported. But if you want to share it with others, you're going to need to create a group or a team to allow others to also work in that portfolio. So with those considerations in mind, you can now make the right choice to decide if portfolio management inside a planner is right for you. And I hope this tutorial has helped you either set up your new portfolio or work out if it's the right option for you. If it has, why not hit the like button or let me know in the comments. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button to find more great tutorials just like this, helping you use the tools you already have in much better ways. And otherwise, well, I'll be seeing you on the next one.